When I think of the cross, I think of the insults and the mockery that came from the crowd. I think of a painful 39 lashes and the excruciating pain from a thorn-filled crown. When I think of the cross, I, I think of brutal suffering and the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus willingly stepped into. You see, the greatest act of love is for the innocent to stand in place for the guilty. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he stood in place for you and me. It's what we call grace. And in a moment of grace, far beyond anything that we could ever comprehend, Jesus took on all our anger, all our anxiety, all our brokenness, all our pain, all our past, every single mistake, all our shame. He took on all the things that we try to carry, but they're just so heavy. But Jesus didn't come just to simply take those things. He came to give us freedom. Because of Him, you're no longer lost to your past. Because of Him, you're no longer a slave to your shame. Because of Him, you're no longer a prisoner to your pain. Because of Him, you're no longer bound to your sin. Because of Jesus, we can actually take these things and lay them down at the foot of the cross. See, God's love has liberated us, you and me free to forever walk in the light of His amazing grace. Good morning, good evening. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Today we're gonna celebrate the resurrection. If you don't mind, Jesus, uh, had a bad day on Friday, had a long weekend, clearing out hell for you and me, not for us to go there, but for us to escape it, and then he came out victorious for us, amen? So we're going to stand and sing and worship and celebrate. We want to welcome you to our humble abode.
endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. saying there's benefits the moon and stars they wept the morning sun was dead the sea 
Savior of the world was falling, his body on the cross, his blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon him. When final breath he gave, as heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness. The battle on the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake. Storm was rolled away. Your perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated forever. He is glorified.
Turn this thing around Turn it around Turn it around Turn it around I'm calling on the name It changes everything
We thank you that you did not view us as something to stay far from, but you came close and gave yourself up for us so we can make our way back to you, Lord. Lord, today in this house, we choose you. Hallelujah. Amen. Say good evening to your neighbor. back there yet. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see all of you this evening. I almost said this morning. <laughs> yeah. On this Easter weekend, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's so good to see you all here. <laughs> You're all here, right? I know I'm here, so it's like, all right. No, welcome, uh, Pastor Bob, and uh, I'm here to welcome you and also tell you that we're here to worship the Lord, of course, because of being Easter weekend. We come worship him every Sunday in song and word, but we also do another way of worshiping him, and that is by giving our, a portion of our uh, tithes and offerings back to him, worship him in, way, in a different way and helping to grow the kingdom here at GLC and across the world and the community. And want to give you a couple of ways that you can give. On the screen behind me, you can see that. Um, if you are giving first time, if you are a first time guest, by the way, this is not for you. This is for the ones that are regular attenders to do this, okay? And uh, if you want to give with the envelope that's in front of you, you can fill that out and put the deposit in the back on the black box in the back wall when you leave. And then also there's other couple of ways online. And um, most people actually do it online today. That's the, kind of the end thing to do. Uh, so if you can do that, that would be greatly appreciated. We do use our funds, money, the monies that we do receive as you bless us to do the things that we need to do here to reach the lost, broken and hurting. All right, so let's, as we do that, let's pray for the offering that's about to be received. We ask you, Lord, right now that you bless 
the gift and the giver as they go ahead and put a portion of what they have gotten through this time in their life, a portion back to you to show their worship to you. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift, for the giver. We pray that everything that is brought in is used to further your kingdom. And we thank you for everyone here today and that we have a blessed time as we go and proceed into the service. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, good evening. Good evening. Happy Easter weekend to you all, and uh, so glad that you're here. For those of you that are first timers, welcome. So glad that you're here. And I uh, just want you to sit back, and I want you just to relax tonight because I want you to understand, I want you to really feel the love of God in your life like you've never felt it before. And I want you to experience that tonight. I want you to understand how much God loves you tonight, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what decisions you've made, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen? Amen. And I'm here to declare to you tonight that we see the video and you see the cross and you say, what in the world is that thing? We're going to get to that in just a moment. But I'm here to declare to you tonight that the devil has been defeated. Amen. Defeated. Now to some of you that might not mean that much. Maybe you are here for uh, the first time back to church for the first time. Or, or like, you know, in a while, or maybe at church for the first time in a long, long time, whatever it might be. But to understand those words, I, I believe, will be a major impact on your life tonight. This is the first of two services. We have a service tomorrow morning at 1030 as well. So you guys kind of get the, the preview of it tonight. And I'm believing God is going to do something amazing. Would you all bow your heads and pray with me? God, I pray right now that you would speak through me, your vessel. That, God, this is all about you. It's not about anything else but you. God, may everything that you do here tonight impact lives, change lives. I believe tonight that walls will come down. Chains will be broken. Lives shall be restored in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for all that you will do. Speak your words through me in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. If, you don't, if you're not used to saying amen, amen means just so be it. I agree. And I'm believing with you tonight. And so I want to talk to you about this. We've been actually in a series. By the way, my name is Keith. I'm the senior pastor here at Greater Life. And uh, it's my honor to bring you the word and be the pastor here at Greater Life. And if you are new and if you, I met some people on the way in, they said they drove by and saw the signs in the yard. See, Pastor Bob, the signs in the yard paid off. <laughs> I told you they would. <laughs> and we're so glad that you're here tonight. Others, I know you've seen us online and, and passed by and different things like that. But do me a favor. Listen, I, I don't know everybody's background. It might be extremely religious. It might be, Pastor Keith, I've never even really gone to church. Whatever it might be, I want you to sit back. I want you to relax. And I want you to allow God to speak into your life tonight. Because I believe that that's what he's going to do. We've been in a series called From the Cross to the Throne. And, and I, I, I believe it's just so impactful this Easter weekend to end this amazing series where we're at. And I want to talk to you tonight about the separation. And you might be thinking, well, that's not maybe the greatest subject. But indeed it is. Indeed it is. I'm going to help you with this tonight. From, from the cross to the throne it wasn't an easy journey. I mean, if it, most of you in here, whether you've gone to church or maybe you only go a couple times a year, I'm sure that you've at least heard something about this cross and, and, and what it actually represents and what it is for us. We've been talking about it over the last month and what it represents. But I... I, I Yes, this is an amazing symbol of Christianity. Yes, our sin was nailed to this cross. Yes, Jesus died for us on this cross. But I want to help you that if you're new to this, uh, whatever you've been through in your life, whatever you're going through right now, you see, I don't ever want to think that we all come in this room. and See, what, what's great about and what I love about Greater Life Church is that no one in this room tonight has it together. Let me say it again. No one in this room tonight, not one person, including the guy talking to you, no one here has it all together. Now, many of us have left, but we haven't arrived, okay? We still driving, baby, all right? All right? We all have our stuff in this life. We've all been through stuff in this. Matter of fact, this morning, I did a funeral on Easter weekend, and, 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 and Pastor Keith Panning and I, we, we, we tag teamed it today, and, 
And, then, and it was a beautiful thing. The, the woman was 103 years old. They went, to be, yeah, went home to be with Jesus. But none of us in this room know what some of us in this room have been through or, or are going through or have gone through. And, and, and I don't... Listen, if, if, I hope that some of you that are new, I, I pray you come back. Because we don't do fake here. Matter of fact, fake is disgusting. I, I, I don't like fake. I, I like the realness. I, I, I try to preach and teach the realness of who God is. And, 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 and understanding that this guy before you has made plenty of mistakes. Man, I've messed up so much in my life. I've got a card. I'm a member, right? And I want you to relate to that. From the cross to the throne. It was, it, it's, it's a crazy journey to get from here to where we're going to go today. But I believe when we get there, it's going to really, 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 really help you. From the, the, the cross, and, and then you'll see over here what represents the throne. There's this great divide in the middle. What is this? Why, why is my way blocked from there to there? There's a reason. And it was a block, it was a veil that was a massive, massive curtain, if you will, that hung in the tabernacle, and, 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 and it, it, it was this veil that, well, let me not get ahead of myself. In the beginning, God created us, right? In order to have relationship with us. That's why God created you, because He loves you and He wants to have a relationship with you. There's this guy who was in the Garden of Eden, I'm sure if you haven't, his name is Adam, Adam and Eve. And Adam was the first man, and he was told not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but like all of us, he took that opportunity to figure that out for himself. And we do that in our lives, don't we? I mean, God will say, hey, I'm gonna, I don't do that, not because I'm trying to give you a list of rules and regulations. God is telling us, don't do that because sin leads to death, and I want to keep you from that. I want to help you from walking down that road. But is anybody going to be honest with themselves like me here tonight who tried to do it their way about a thousand times in your life? See, Adam wanted to determine for himself what was good and evil and not take God's word for it. He wanted to figure out for himself what was true and he wanted to do this all on his own, Rich, because I've heard, my dad will be here tomorrow morning. My dad often said, when I get to heaven, now my dad's 70, he'll be 76 years old this, this year. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have a talk with that Adam, you know, <laughs> you know, right? I'm like, dad, it's cool, man. When we get there, it's, you'll be fine. So, so, Adam messed up, but the last time I looked, we've all messed up. Yeah. We've all missed it. We've all made decisions that we regret and wish we didn't do in this life. Maybe things we've said that we're like, wish I could try to get that one back, right? Maybe even this week, maybe even on the way to church. I mean, Christians don't do that, right? Because, you know, Christians are, <clears throat> we are perfect, and we don't. If you're looking for a perfect church, get out now. Get, get, because there's no perfect church. Listen, people got stuff. So he wanted to figure this out himself. So what happens? Adam rebels against God, like we've done in our life. But what happened when Adam rebelled, sin was introduced into the world. And mankind becomes now subject to this thing called death. Death. I don't like death. I don't know about you. Isaiah 59 and 2 says this, But your sins have, now watch, 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 separated you. Your sins have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you. If you've ever cried out to God like I have and said, God, where are you? Because I've been there. I've been in the darkest places in my life. But it wasn't God who was hiding from me. 
It was my sin that was blocking the path to the blessings that he had for me in my life, in your life. So this causes what I talked about at the beginning, separation between God, listen, and us. Now, this is important to know. I'm going to give you the backstory to this so we understand where we're going to get today. There's a separation that, that, that can still exist today in our life. Some people are still experiencing it. Mankind continues to look for satisfaction and fulfillment elsewhere. But we shouldn't be surprised because if you do read the Bible, Jesus says a lot about this. They'll hate you for my name's sake. In the world, you will find trouble. Trouble, trouble. And if you don't find trouble... It's waiting for you. So how do we deal with this? Because of this sin in the Old Testament, sacrifices had to be made. Okay? Until Jesus arrived here, sacrifices had to be made. And the sacrifices were made in this place called the temple or the tabernacle. So why was this done? Well, number one, the time for the Savior, Jesus, to save us had not come yet. And number two, the tabernacle and its sacrifices, here you go, would provide accommodations for people to worship God. So we could say this way, at that time without Jesus, we were limited at best in our worship of an almighty God. Because of the human sin condition and the fact that God's holiness and our sinfulness, listen, cannot coexist. Hmm. Mankind could not commune directly with God, so a tabernacle was made, and then this thing called animal sacrifice begins. Now, don't worry, you're not in a church where we're going to do anything weird, okay? Promise. So in order to fully understand the tabernacle, we need to look back at the Old Testament. Inside the tabernacle, here in this, look at place of separation mm, was a place called the Holy of Holies. Okay? Within the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant, well, let me say this, it signified um, this place, the Holy of Holies. Let me say it this way. Within it, there's a golden lampstand and it provided light, okay, within the tabernacle. And God manifested His presence beyond this uh, above the lid of the ark, and it's called the mercy seat, and it would have been on the other side of this veil, okay? The only person who could enter the Holy of Holies was the high priest. Now you might be like, what does this have to do with Easter? Ready? Everything. Yeah. Mm. One day a year, it was called the Day of Atonement, the high priest, he would enter into the Holy of Holies to simply, for a period of time, cover the sin of mankind. Offer the blood of a lamb, goat bull, offer it up. And, 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 and for the Old Testament, it was pleasing to God. That was fine. But, but God knew better to look down the road to know that that's not something that could last forever. You can't just cover, oh, hear me. You can't just, you can't just cover sin for a period of time because sin will always find its way out. And, and the other side of it is this too, is that's not a time for you then to feel guilty or ashamed See, guilt is nothing but something from the pit of hell. Uh, shame follows the pit of hell. That is nothing that God wants for your life. Well, I feel guilty. That's not God. Matter of fact, that's the enemy and that's religion. Religion wants to make you feel guilty. And, and that was a, a big part of the Old Testament. Religion said, well, if you're obedient, then you have the blessings. If you're disobedient, then you have the cursings. It was, it was salvation, almost it really was, by what we had to earn our way in to the presence of God. 
And religion tries to continue to do that today. And I've seen religion mess up more people than sometimes not knowing God at all. Yeah. So this high priest goes in once a year. Now there's this veil. It was, it, it was a massive veil. It's a vivid reminder of the divide between God and us. So for now, this is where they worshipped God. But it still kept us from experiencing the glory of God. Listen, up close. I, I, I only had this. I knew the presence of God was on the other side of it, but why couldn't I have access into it? Sin. There, there, there was and there is a sin problem. But see, and some of you young ones in the room, sin is just brushed under the rug now. Sin is only sin to the person who thinks or doesn't think it might or might not be sin. And that's the world we live in. And, and I want to challenge you that follow Christ every day of your life. Stand up for what you know. Stand up for what you believe in. And I'm not saying, listen, we're called as Christians to walk in love. We're supposed to go after people. Listen, in love. We're not, when we become Christians, we're supposed to be different from the world. But I don't know about you. I've met some Christians. Hoy. But let us not be like that. Let us chase after people. Why? Because the love of God is in my heart. And tomorrow, listen, when I said I've been in the darkest moments in my life, listen, Easter weekend, we love Easter weekend, but Easter falls on March 31st. This is the day our daughter died, March 31st. That 20, how many years ago? 25 years ago, we, we buried our daughter on Easter weekend. And you go through dark times in your life that you think, God, what? And then you begin to see the love of God in your life to help you get through these situations, dark times in your life. Listen, there's this, there's this separation. And now we need a mediator. A mediator in the Bible is just a go-between. We need somebody because we, we can't get through this. We can't. We're blocked. We cannot get through it. So we have to have this mediator, this go-between between us and God. So why the temple? Why the sacrifice? This would make people clean from their sin. Listen to a couple of scriptures. Leviticus 17.11 it says this, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar, look at this, to make atonement for. And in the Old Testament, it was just to cover sin. To make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood, look at this, that makes atonement for the soul. Hebrews 9.22 in the New Testament says, And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness. So God knew from the very beginning of time, the moment that Adam messed up, that one day something was going to have to happen. And it's what we call Easter. It's what we call Resurrection Sunday, which is amazing. It's wonderful, absolutely. But what I wanted to get in your hearts tonight and tomorrow morning was, yes, those are all wonderful things, but what did it take to get there? And, and maybe you've seen the videos before, and maybe you've heard the things before, and yet, yes, yeah, yeah, he was nailed to a cross, and I know the story, I know the story. But has it gone beyond a story to a full relationship in your own life? Not your moms, not your dads, not your families. You. Do you. Do you. Can you say today, listen, my wife, she looked at me a, a number of years ago when we were dating and she looked me in the eye and she, she said this to me. She said, if you were to die tonight, do you know if you'd go to heaven or hell? Do you know? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt? Well, Pastor Keith, I'm a good person. It doesn't matter if you're a good person. Because what's our definition of good? Yours will be different than mine. Well, look at all the things I did. You're getting back to trying to earn your way back into God's favor. That's not what it's about either. It's about mm, the Day of Atonement. 
The high priest made a sacrifice uh, to seek cleansing for all the sins of the people, where he would go in, he would sprinkle blood on the altar within the tabernacle, then he would enter the Holy of Holies, and he would sprinkle more blood on the mercy seat. And this, at a time, suffice. This act of atonement achieved what we would call reconciliation between God and us. But the barrier, look at this, between them was only temporarily removed. And this would be a foreshadow of the Savior that was promised. Hebrews 10 4 says this, For it is not possible. It is not possible. I want to help you today not to live under the law. Now let me get over into like, what that would really mean in your life. Stop trying to earn God's love because you can't. Stop trying to earn God's favor because you can't. No human being can earn this thing. It is a free gift, freely given, promised to you and to me, listen, that someone else took on our behalf. And we know it to be Jesus. Hmm. It is not possible, look at this, that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Listen, they were only temporarily covered. Animal sacrifices then... Animal sacrifices remind the people that their sins were costly. But even then, and that the blood or, or, or blood must be shed for a reconciliation to occur. So if this was only temporary, then something else had to happen. So now fast forward about 1,400 years to Jesus from the Old Testament tabernacle. From the beginning, God never sought to be separated from us. That was never His plan. Aren't you glad that you can, or at least might, or maybe do serve a God who's never given up on you? Yeah. I think about all the times. And my dad would say, well, I'm going to talk to Adam. I, I feel like I'm going to get up there and go, God, I'm, I'm just an idiot. <laughs> I, here's all my stuff, God. I lay it before you. I'm just, and God's like, I don't remember any of that. So I want to help you with this tonight. God never wanted to be separated from us. Romans 5, 12, 3, and 23 says this, As by one man, this is Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and we are like sheep that have gone astray. So the time had come for God to remove this barrier, this sin barrier, but He does it, and I love God, so He does it in such a, an amazing, dramatic fashion. Because He doesn't say, I'm going to choose one of you. Now, he looks at all of us and he says, I'll go. I mean, the perfection. Imagine never touching sin in your life, never touching evil in your life, and choosing, I'll go. I'll do it. Mark 15, 37 and 38 says this, And Jesus cried out with a loud voice. He breathed his last then the veil, when Jesus breathed his last, it says the temple was torn in two. Okay? What a wonderful thing. Wow, look at this. I now have access. Why? He gives up his last breath. It, listen, he, he gives... On this cross, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was separated from God. Why? So that we would not be separated anymore. Yeah. He chose to do this. Yes, the cross was cruel. Yes, the Garden of Gethsemane where he prayed was cruel. But it was leading to the joy set before him, which is us. And now you can see... Wow, there's a way through. But not only that, Jesus sees the throne. Everything had built up to this moment. Everything had built up to this The veil was about three and a half inches thick. Jesus gives up his breath. It is finished. The power of God rips. Listen, the separation that kept me and you from him, 
it separates it in half. In the Old Testament, God would cut covenant with man by splitting an animal in half, and they'd walk through the blood and its parts. Gross. Touch your neighbor and say, that's disgusting. But that's what they did, all right? That's what they did. Not now. The covenant he chose to cut with you and with me took place in a veil. Maybe you need to see it a little bit differently. David, would you give me a hand? He's on the cross, right? Thank you, David. He has the cross. His blood is, is, is pouring down this cross. He gives up his life. Now, there's many around him that are thinking, oh my gosh, he, he said he would... He did, what just happened? He's, he died. How, what, how, and we learned last week that he actually descended into the lower parts of the earth for us. He took back the keys of death and the grave. But what we don't see in the supernatural, I want to show you in the natural, is the moment that he gave up his breath. This blood made a way right through this separation. Why? Why would he do that? To get to the throne. To sit down, the Bible says, at the right hand of God. Forevermore. Here's what I want you to see tonight, though as we close this up, is I, no matter what you've been through in your life, no matter what you're going through in your life, I want you to know that the good news of the gospel, that's the Bible, is that God is no longer holding man's sin against him. Why? He can't. It's finished. The blood, listen, the blood where the high priest should have been that day offering up sacrifice of animals that would be slaughtered so that, listen, sin would just be covered. Instead, he is at the trial of Jesus. And at that moment, no blood is offered up except the blood of God himself. Right here. Parts the veil for us. Opens it up for us. Now you and I have no barrier to God. We have a way to God. We can cut. Listen, that's why the scripture says we can boldly. Come on. Come to oh, the throne of grace in times of need. And he will. Amen. All because of this right here. I want you to picture this every day of your life. Every time you think, well, I'm not good enough. We'll never be good enough. Every time you think, man, I, I, I've done so many wrong things in my life. Join the club. Every time I think all these things, I, I've got to get the focus off of me. And understand there's no more separation between me and God. So what does that mean for me then? And you? All of us. In this room, unless Jesus returns before that time, we'll face death in this body. This body will go back to the grave. The reason that you can have what we call eternal life, life eternal, live forever. Now, let me help you with something. Everyone in this room is going to live forever. But where? Where? I don't know if I believe in a literal heaven or hell. You will. You will. Let me close with this. I said I did a funeral this morning. I've done funerals. And I've asked been due to do funerals over the last 10, 15 years. A bunch of them. Too many of them. And I know the difference between when someone understands this and they don't. The darkness that's in that room. Stop believing the lie of the world to try to get you to not believe that there's something beyond this life. There is. Hell was never meant for human beings. 
It was meant for the devil and his demons. Yet hell is expanding daily and daily. And let me put this in perspective because my wife and I just had this conversation. She sent me a text the other day and it was about this one scripture. And, and, and right now I think there's about 9 billion people on the planet. Let me help you. 3 billion of the 9 billion know Christ. 6 People say, well, 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 you know, we don't need the church anymore. We don't need... We... Nine billion don't know him. So what I want to help you with is what we do here at Greater Life Church. We want you to know that you can be loved, have life, and fulfill your purpose. And the only way that happens is through a loving God, through his son, Jesus Christ. Period. Nothing else. This man can't save you. No one can save you. You've already been saved by Jesus, the blood of Christ. And when you accept Him into your life, let me, let me help you. He will radically change your life. Radically. It doesn't mean it's perfect. <laughs> I wish. <sighs> I wish. Perfect? Never. If you want to see true perfection... Leave this planet, die. And see him. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this last scripture. Uh, guys, Hebrews 9, 11 through 15, 24 through 26. Listen to this. But Christ came as high priest. So now, instead of that religious high priest, we have the high priest who offered up his own blood. No more animal sacrifice. But Christ came as high priest of good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. What does that mean? <laughs> He became our substitute. He took our place. Everything you and I deserved, He took. And there's a day coming, and I believe it's very soon, that if you don't know Him, the judgment that will fall is like nothing you've ever seen or could ever imagine. I usually don't preach that side of it, but hell is the most horrible place. And listen, it's forever. Don't act like most people in this world like they're going to live forever because you will not. At least in this physical body, you will go somewhere. And that place is up to you. It's your choice. It says, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a cow or a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more? Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, look at this, offered himself. I don't know about you, but I, I love my wife and I love my family, but, and, I, and I, I would die for them, but die for the whole world? None of us could. Verse 15, and this is the reason he is the mediator or the go-between of the new covenant by means of death. For the redemption of the sins under the old covenant, or the first one, that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, look at this, now to appear in the presence of God, here it is, for us. Not that he should... Did you notice that there is no scripture that I read tonight to you that said that th all the stuff you have to do? Right. Pastor Keith, I'll, I'll just get my life right and then you'll never get your life right until you surrender all of it to him. Amen. Then and only then. Not that he should suffer or should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place 
every day of the year, or once a year, he then would have to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice himself. I share one more thing with you. It doesn't end there. When the Lamb of God carried His own blood into the Holy of Holies, at that moment, at that moment, He became Savior. What does that mean? He saved you and I from a wrath that is coming that you and I never want to see. Hebrews 10.12 says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, what did he do? He sat down at the right hand of God. But listen to this. Acts 7, 48 and 49 and 1 Corinthians 3, 16. I put these together for you on the screen. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? And what is the place of my rest? Do you not know? That is my question to you tonight. Do you not know that you are, or you could be, when you surrender your life to Him, the very temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If you're like me, loved one, tonight, and you're fed up with all the stuff, maybe you're fed up with yourself, maybe you're fed up with the, the, the crazy, crazy world we live in right now. I, I don't know if it's true, but someone sent me a text today and said that, that, that our government chose tomorrow to not celebrate Easter. Did you all see that? It would be Trans Awareness Day. Now let me help you with something, because sometimes this is where we, the church, get, 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 get lost. And then I'm going to pray for you tonight. Don't get lost being lost. What I mean by that is there are things that if we believe in Jesus and what the Bible says that we don't believe in, we have a difficult time with. But there are six billion broken people. Stop looking at people and thinking, well, it's this sin or it's that sin. It's just sin, baby. And it separates them from God. What is the job of the church? Uh, what, what is our job as Christians? Tell them. Amen. Love them. Thank God Jesus didn't look at us on our worst day and judge us. He forgave us. You can be forgiven if you ask forgiveness into your heart tonight. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Matt and the team, you guys can come up. If you're here tonight or watching at home, every eye closed, every head bowed, I want to give you an opportunity to surrender your life to the one who gave his life for you. That's what this is all about. Listen, worship was great. I pray that the word impacted your heart tonight, but this is the most important part right here right now. Just as my wife looked at me in the eye all those years ago and said, if you were to die tonight, do you know if you'd go to heaven or hell? Do you have that assurance? Do you know that you know that you know? And, and right now, I can, I, can, I can sense it, and a lot of your minds are thinking, well, I'm just, I'm not good enough. No, listen, none of us are. That's why he sent his son to break this veil for us. That's why he came here. None of us are. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So here's my question to everyone here tonight, young and old. Wow, you know, Pastor Keith, my, my mom and dad, you know, they went to the church their whole... It doesn't matter. Their blood and sacrifice doesn't get you into heaven. Only the blood of Christ. So if you're here today, every eye closed, every head bowed, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, listen, for the first time, or you say, Pastor Keith, I did this 
I did this a long time ago, but I want to rededicate my life tonight. I want to get back on track with God. I know that I've messed up. I know that I failed, but I'm going to trust God in it. And I'm going to trust God with my life. In a moment, the whole church, everyone here will pray a prayer out loud. We don't call people out here. We don't embarrass people. We, listen, this should be the easiest decision of your life. Easiest. Religion and people and churches over the years have messed it up. This should be easy. Just surrender. Just give it all to Him. You think... Oh, Pastor, that I feel like that that's God tugging on my heart tonight. For the first time, giving your life or rededicating your life. Either one of those. In the moment, like I said, the church is going to pray a prayer out loud. I would love for you to join in that prayer, but just for my sake as the pastor here, I would love to know if there's anyone here that will pass from death to life, dark to light tonight. This it's the most important decision of your life. If that's you, I'm just going to ask that you would do me the honor and the favor. And this is you watching at home too. You can do this as well. I don't see you, but God sees you. If this is you, don't worry about anyone to your left, right, front, behind you. You. If you died tonight, do you know where you would spend eternity? If you don't, you can if that's you, would you do me the honor and the favor tonight in this place? Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for next week. They may never come. Make the decision. Listen, now, because he loves you so much. If that's you, would you do me the honor and the favor? You say, Pastor Keith, that's me. Would you just throw your hand up in the air right now and say, Pastor Keith, that is me. Is there anybody here? that says, I want to do that for the first time or rededicate my life tonight, do it now. If that's you at home, you do it as well. I don't see hands, but I believe that there are some here today. Let's all pray this prayer together right now. Say this right where you're seated. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. Come into my life. Make me brand new. Thank you. You died for me. You were buried for me. You rose again just for me. Jesus, I turn from all my sin. And I am a child of God in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, 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 Amen. I didn't see any hands, but that doesn't ever mean anything. If you prayed that for the very first time or rededicated your life tonight, we're going to ask you to do one simple thing. One of two things. Stop at our Life Hub downstairs on your way out. As you exit the doors downstairs, you'll see a little booth on your left that says Life Hub. Stop there. Let someone know you gave your life to Jesus. And we will celebrate with you. The Bible says that when one gives their life to Christ, all of heaven rejoices. So if you did that today, come on. Stop at our Life Hub on your way out. Talk to somebody. you got a connection card on your way in. Fill that out. Let someone know. All they're going to do is this. They're going to put a Bible in your hands with today's date, your name, so you never forget Then the moment you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to do that. If you're watching at home or you have to get, none of you have to get anywhere, but whatever, okay? <laughs> if you have to get, there are packets of information on both desks. Grab one of those, take it with you. You can also text the word greater to 97,000. When you do, a link will be sent to you. All of this is on your connection card as well. Text the word greater to 97,000. A link will be sent with you, to you. Click on that link. And then click, you gave your life to Jesus, and someone will be in touch with you. Amen? Do me another favor, would you? Tomorrow morning at 1030, we've got another service. And there is numerous people not here tonight that are going to be here tomorrow. Be praying for them. If you want to come back and get some more, come back and get some more. That's okay, too. 
We're believing for life change. We're believing for salvations. We're believing for massive life change. Amen. It's been my honor to bring you the word tonight. Before Pastor Bob comes in and dismisses us, would you all stand? Matt and the team are going to sing an amazing song over us. And I just ask you to take just the next few moments before you go and let's worship together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You can remain standing. I won't be long. If the prayer partners can please come on up front while I begin here, just make a couple of announcements. Let's be careful there. Um, this coming week on April 2nd, which is already April, right around the corner here, 
at 7 o'clock, a live youth is going to begin. And exciting, yes. Yes. That's this, this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Also, next week, <coughs> Pastor starts a new series called Dignity and Worth. Um, it's a great series. You've got to be a part of that to really learn what you are worth in Jesus Christ. Discipleship class next Sunday, uh, at right after service, April 7th. Uh, our church is also starting that day on April 7th, next Sunday. And I want to make sure that the men remember to sign up for the men's breakfast. I looked yesterday and there were zero sign-ups. I know more guys are hungry than that. <laughs> All right? So you need to sign up for that this week, please. We need to have a number. And um, men's breakfast for sure on that. And that's about it. I um, want to thank you all for coming. I'm sorry I'm losing my voice. I've had this sinus thing all week. Um, thank you for coming. Pray that you pray that as you leave from here, you're blessed by this word that was given this evening. And before we leave, also as you, uh, the prayer partners are up here for you to come up to prayer or if any kind of a praise that you might have of what God is doing in your life, they would also like to know that. Okay, let's pray and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you died to save us from our sins, that we are now free in you. And we ask, Lord, that as we leave this pl pl place this evening, that we can be free because we know that you are in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you help us to go out from this place and share your love with the world.